Hello everyone, welcome to episode 9 of the Algamaker CSS course. Today we'll discuss the various measurement units available in CSS. So far in this series we have come across pixel and percentage measurements, however CSS offers many more options. By the end of this video we will have made our game a lot more accessible using the units which I'll explain in the video, due to the fact that our layout will adjust to the preferred font size of the player, which they set in their browser settings. I'll of course show you how to do this yourself, but I'll also explain several scenarios where it's better to use one type of measurement unit over another. So without further ado, let's begin. First let's talk about the types of measurement units that CSS provides. There are two of them, absolute and relative types. Absolute lengths are fixed and they appear exactly in the size that they are set. There are several different absolute units which are listed here in the W3Schools website. First of all we have centimeters, then millimeters, then we have inches, also we have pixels which we have used during this course already, but we also have points and picas. I'll also scroll down a little bit for those of you who want to read this statement here, feel free to pause the video, but really it's not that important. Now you might be asking, why would anyone ever use a different absolute length than pixels? Well, in Adult Game Maker and really in web development in general nowadays, you most likely won't need to if you don't want to. As most of these units were created during an older era of the internet, where monitors and screens in general didn't vary that much in size, so you could get away with making your website a fixed width, for example. Another reason is that in the past, right, a lot of websites were created to be able to be printed on paper, so physical dimensions like centimeters, millimeters, and inches were really important so that um, the website looks good on a printed piece of paper. However, that doesn't mean that these units are completely obsolete. Uh, they may still be useful, even with a tool like Adel Game Maker. You could maybe use them if you want to create a stylized print-based layout with a fixed width for your game, uh, which is a style that the Adel Game Maker archives website uses as well. It might be more convenient in that case to use centimeters or inches so that your layout has precise physical dimensions. They may also be useful in a setting where you want to create a custom layout and know exactly what the screen of the users playing your game will be. This might occur when maybe you're creating a game for someone special and you know their monitor size or a group of people that all have the same device. It could be more convenient again in that case and simple to just once again use absolute lengths other than pixels. Anyways, let's now move on to relative units. And first up, we have the EM unit, right? Which W3Schools, I feel like, explains quite well. It's simply a unit relative to the font size of an HTML element. It's most commonly used with paddings and margins, as those are the two properties that often matter the most when taking font size into consideration. Therefore, it's really useful to have your paddings and margins scale with the font size of your HTML elements. As an example of how the EM unit works, if our buildings had a font size of 20 pixels and we set the padding to have a value of 2 EM, the padding would be double that of the font size, so 40 pixels. If you were to set their padding to instead be 0.5M, they would have a padding half that of the font size, so 10 pixels. Now, as a final piece of advice, I want to tell you that you should not use the EM unit to set the font size itself, right? For that, the REM unit should be used, which I'll get to in just a second. But to kind of clarify why it shouldn't be used to set font sizes, well, it's because it can create a lot of confusing inheritance-based issues. Basically, if you use the EM unit to set the font size of an HTML, element that means the font size of that element is dependent on its parent and if you use the em unit everywhere in your game then uh, that parent's font size is dependent on its parent font size and that parent's font size is dependent on its parent font size and it just becomes a really convoluted mess so once again do not use the em unit to set the font sizes themselves use rem instead Next up, let's talk about the EX unit. This one, I'm gonna be honest, you're probably never gonna use unless you really want to. Even here, it says that it's rarely used, uh, but basically what it does, because here it's described a little bit ambiguously, right, is that it sets the length relative to the height of the lowercase letter X of the element's font. Really, all you need to know is that one EX is really just a half of one EM. And now you might be asking, why would anyone ever use this sort of unit? Well. The X character is usually half the height of the largest uppercase character in a font family. Uh, so you might use it if you want your layout to scale better with lowercase letters in your game. But, you know, all things considered, you most likely won't use this unit very often. And it doesn't exactly have situations where it's better to use compared to other units. Anyways, let's now talk about the CH unit, which is very similar to the EX unit, but it's actually used a lot more often. And what it does is that it sets the length of something relative to the width of the character zero, quite literally, in the element's font family. 
Again, this unit might seem useless at first, however it can be very useful with monospace fonts, which are fonts where every character has the exact same width, because then the unit allows you to set dimensions based on the number of characters. Essentially, if you set the width of something to 60ch, it will always be as wide as 60 characters, regardless of the font size. And this unit is most commonly used with the max width property because it allows you to set a max width of an element based on the number of characters. Most likely you'd see this used uh, on logs in Idle Game Maker, but with some clever usage, you can certainly squeeze a lot more out of this unit. Next up we have the rem unit and it's very similar to the EM unit, but instead of setting the length relative to the font size of the HTML element, it sets the length relative to the font size of the root element. Basically, this is the unit you should always use to set font sizes in your game because being relative to the root element means the unit is relative to the browser font size set by the player. Uh, that's all you really need to know in order to use this unit, but I really want to explain what the root element is as well because it's mentioned in a lot of CSS concepts that you may come across. So what is the root element? Well, in HTML, we know that HTML elements are organized in a hierarchical structure due to inheritance. This is often referred to as a family tree. And in this hierarchy, you have parent elements and child elements, which can create a complex structure. At the very top of this hierarchy is then the root element, the parent of all parents, so to speak. For most websites, the root element is the HTML tag. And this tag acts as the parent of all other elements on the page. When you inspect the structure of a web page using inspect element, uh, and you know, if we scroll up here, you'll see that every other element is nested inside this HTML tag here, making it the ancestor of all elements on the page, or in other words, the root element. This HTML tag then inherits the font size of the user's browser, which is then further inherited by all the elements inside the page. Basically, this means the REM unit or REM unit specifies a length relative to the font size set by the user on their browser. And this is amazing for accessibility, since some people might need to enlarge their default browser font size in order to be able to read better. So the REM unit is essential to make your game accessible to everyone. All right, but when should you actually use them? Well, generally the REM units are used to set font sizes on HTML elements because they scale with the preference of the user. I'll also be doing this uh, later on in the video where I will set all the font sizes in my game to uh, some kind of REM measurement. But for now, let's talk about the viewport units. And first up, we have a viewport width and viewport height. And in order to understand these units, you must first understand what a viewport is. Essentially, the viewport is the area of a web page that's visible to the user. Some people upon hearing this think the viewport is the entire browser window, but that's not entirely the case. The viewport specifically refers to the portion of the browser window where the web page content is displayed, excluding the browser's uh, user interface elements like the address bar, search bar, toolbars, and any sidebars. Uh, these browser components are part of the overall browser window, but are not part of the viewport. So when talking about the viewport, we're specifically referring to the part of the window where the website is actually displayed, not the entire browser window, including its interface elements. All of these viewport units then set lengths relative to the viewport. VW and VH set lengths relative to the width and height of the viewport, and in essence, one of these units is equivalent to 1% of the viewport's specified dimension, whether that be the width or the height. You might want to use these units if you want to set the width or height of some child element without the parent element having any influence over it. Most commonly, however, you are going to be using these two units to set the dimensions of your outermost layout boxes that have no parent elements. We used percentages for this purpose in the last episode, however, it's better practice to use the VW and VH units for this purpose as they scale more consistently. Last but not least, we have the Vmin and Vmax units. And I'm gonna be honest, I've never really seen these be used at all in Idle Game Maker. So they do as they say here, I'm just gonna more or less skip over them, since in the context of Idle Game Maker, I doubt you're ever gonna really use these units. Of course, you also have the percentage measurement, but we covered that one in the last episode. So if you haven't watched that yet, you definitely should, as the percentage measurement, in my opinion, is one of the most useful uh, relative units. All right, and now with the different measurement units explained, the next thing I wanna do is, uh, I wanna keep the size, the font sizes in my game, the exact same, right? But convert their uh, pixel measurements to rem units so that they scale with the user's preferences, right? That they set in the browser settings. A simple way we could go about doing this, right? Because at first glance, this seems like a complex problem since uh, we have quite a lot of font sizes in our game. However, uh, a neat little trick we can use to 
find all the font sizes in our game is to use this uh, magnifying glass tool that Notepad++ provides and we can find all the occurrences of the font size property. Uh, of course, before we do that, I first want to find the hashtag game.on selector. Here we go. And I want to add a font size to everything in our game to be 0.75 rem. This should keep the proportions of our text the exact same, except that uh, elements that do not have their font size set will inherit this font size and uh, thus Basically, everything in our game will be scaling with the user's preferences. If you're interested in how this was calculated, right, because we will be using this a lot, is that you simply divide uh, the font size of the elements by the default browser font size, which is usually 16. So I believe the default font size in our game maker is 12 pixels. So if we can just, you know, I already did this here, but basically you can do 12 divided by 16, which gives you a ratio of 0.75. And that's you know, our REM measurement. So we're going to be using this to our advantage. So let's find uh, an occurrence of a font size. First one is the news header, right? So we want to change these pixel units to REM units and we want to keep their size the exact same. So the way we do that is, once again, we just divide 20 by 16. Oops, not 6, but 16. That should be 1.25. And that's the ratio that we get. So 1.25 REM. Uh, this news content here can just stay 1 REM because 16 divided by 16 is just 1. The next font size we have is in our header and our footers. So here, once again, we need to add a font size of 1.25 rem. Okay, so even with the padding, we can do the same calculation, right? We can simply divide 8 uh, by 16, which should give us 0.5 rem. So uh, next up, what's the next occurrence of the font size? It's in our buildings, right? So font size of our buildings is 14 pixels. I think it would be just better if we used 1 rem. In that case, basically, we are changing it from 16 or 14 pixels to 16 pixels, right? Because 16 pixels is my browser's default font size. Uh, then we have a margin top. I don't think this needs to scale with the font. And yeah, I think we are done there. Next. So the resources, right? Uh, they have a font size of larger. So I'm just going to, you know, set this to be 1.25 rem the same size as our headers. I'm just gonna set the padding to be around 0.5 RAM, I think would look good. And the margin, we can just keep that the same as the padding. Or you know what, actually, now that I think about it, it would probably look better if uh, the font size of the resources was just one RAM uh, to keep it um, the same as the buildings. I think that would give it a nice sort of, you know, themed, thematical look. Anyways, what's the next instance of the, of the font size? Oh, that's actually all there is. Okay, so now let's save our changes into File Garden and let's see how our game looks. All right, and now that I save my changes, it doesn't seem like a lot has changed inside of our game. We really only uh, enlarge the font size of our buildings here. However, the really interesting thing that has changed is that if I open up my settings here, uh, my browser settings, and set the font size to something else than medium, which is just the default value of 16 pixels. For example, if I set it to small, everything changes value accordingly, right? Which is really, really cool. And, you know, I can make it even smaller if I really want. Obviously, this is uh, pretty much unplayable. <laughs> However, someone might uh, like a larger font style like this, or a very large font style, which almost breaks our layout a little bit, <laughs> but uh, it still holds together. And with this, even our tooltips are scaling with the browser font size, as well as our new sticker and even uh, the settings menu here and the info section. We have made our game a lot more accessible. It's really cool that we added this much control to the players playing our game. Basically, they can now dictate the font size of the game. Right, and that's going to be the end of this video. Hopefully you found this tutorial useful. In the next few videos, we will be talking about transitions and animations, but also how to style tooltips, which are very, very interesting topics. Honestly, I think transitions are my absolute favorite thing with CSS, so make sure to not miss the next episode. Anyways, if you found this tutorial useful, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you really enjoy what I do here, feel free to check out my Patreon, where for only $2 a month, you can get some pretty nice perks, such as having your name included in the outro of my videos. So once again, Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.